Right from our school textbooks to museums and popular culture, the visual representation of how apes went from walking on all fours to standing tall on two feet is something we are all familiar with. What is still not clear is exactly how and why this evolution took place. Anthropologists have long thought that our ape ancestors evolved an upright torso in order to pick fruits in forests. But in this episode, I will talk about a new research in the journal Science from the University of Michigan which suggests that a life in open woodlands and a diet that included leaves instead of fruits drove apes upright stature. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. Earlier, scientists assumed that since apes have an upright back, it must be living in forests and it must be eating fruit. Fruits grow on spindly peripheries of trees. To reach it, large apes need to distribute their weight on branches stemming from the trunk, then reach out with their hands towards the prize. This is much easier if an ape is upright because it can more easily grab on different branches with its hands and feet. If its back is horizontal, then its hands and feet are generally underneath the body, making it much harder to move outward to smaller branches of a tree, especially if the ape is large-bodied. This is how modern-day apes reach fruit and as has been theorized, that's why apes evolved to be upright. But new research centered around a 21 million year old fossil ape called Morotopithecus suggests that might not be the case. Surprisingly, the researchers found that the ape ate leaves, which changes the basis of the hypothesis. So now researchers think that early apes ate leaves and lived in a seasonal woodland with a broken canopy and open grassy areas. The researchers suggest that this landscape, instead of fruit, in closed canopy forests, drove the apes' upright stature. The finding not only sheds light on ape origins, but also pushes back the origin of grassy woodlands from between 7 million and 10 million years ago to 21 million years ago, during a period known as the early Miocene. Their results are published in the journal Science and are bolstered by a companion paper examining these paleo grassy woodland habitats published in the same issue of the journal. The study is a result of a collaboration of international paleontologists collectively known as the research on Eastern African Catarine and Hominoid Evolution Project or REACH each of whom focus on different aspects of early ape paleo environments. This particular study focuses on a 21 million year old site called the Moroto site in eastern Uganda. There, the group examined fossils found in a single rocky layer, including fossils of Morotopithecus, the oldest clearly documented ape. Also, within this layer were fossils of other mammals, ancient soils, called paleosols and tiny silica particles from plants called phytoliths. The researchers used these lines of evidence to recreate the ancient environment of Morotopithecus. The team discovered that the plants living in this landscape were what's called water stressed, meaning they lived through seasonal periods of rain and aridity. This also means that at least part of the year apes had to rely on something other than fruit to survive. Together, these findings indicate that Morotopithecus lived in an open woodland punctuated by a broken canopy of forest composed of trees and shrubs. Now, such open environments also explain human origins and it was thought that such seasonal environments in place of thick forests began to appear between 10 and 7 million years ago. Such an environmental shift was also thought to have been responsible for our ancestors to start walking on two feet because they started striding around on the ground since the trees were further apart. But now this research shows that such open environments were present at least 10 million years before bipedalism evolved. So that changes what we so far knew about human origins. The first clue that these ancient apes were eating leaves was in the apes molars. The molars like this with peaks and valleys are used for tearing fibrous leaves apart while molars used for eating fruit are typically more rounded. The researchers also examined the apes dental animal as well as the dental animal of other animals found in the same layer. The researchers also examined the apes dental enamel 
as well as the dental enamel of other mammals found in the same layer. Their dental enamel showed that the apes and other mammals had been eating water-stressed plants that are more common in the open woodland or grassy woodland environments today. So putting together the locomotion, the diet and the environment, the researchers are proposing a new model for ape origins. Anthropologists care a lot about ape evolution because humans are closely related to apes. Previously, researchers believed equatorial Africa during the early Miocene was thickly carpeted with forests and that open seasonal woodlands and grasslands evolved between 7 million and 10 million years ago. For this study, researchers used a set of environmental proxies to reconstruct the vegetation structure from nine fossil ape sites across Africa, including the Moroto site during the early Miocene, which was 23 million years ago to 15.97 million years ago. The nine sites are scattered across eastern equatorial Africa, enough to develop a regional picture of what the site's landscapes look like in the early Miocene. During this time, the Eastern African Rift was forming. Earth was pulling apart. As a result, the entire region was uplifted, causing huge variation in topography and therefore regional climate and vegetation. To reconstruct the paleo environment at each location, the researchers used carbon isotope analysis of ancient soil organic matter, plant wax biomarkers and phytoliths found at each site. The carbon isotope analysis revealed that a wide range of plants lived in the grasslands, ranging from those that comprised closed canopy to wooded grasslands. The wax biomarkers left over from the waxy material that protects leaves also indicate that a large variety of shrubs and trees as well as grasses. Phytoliths, which are microscopic biosilica bodies that give plants their structures as well as a defense against being eaten, can tell researchers the proportion of the types of grasses at a given site. After using these proxies to rebuild the paleo environments at these nine sites, the researchers found that perennial grasses, which are able to grow under a wide range of circumstances, were abundant across eastern equatorial Africa and were a key part of the landscape's heterogeneous habitats. The data also pushes back the oldest evidence of grass-dominated habitats in Africa and globally by more than 10 million years. The findings transform what we thought we know about early apes and the origin for where, when and why they navigate through the trees and on the ground in multiple different ways. This is Mohana Basu, Assistant Editor at The Print. Do continue to follow us on social media platforms for the latest news updates.